I'm June Gruber, an Associate Professor of Psychology at the University of Colorado Boulder and Director of this Mental Health Expert Series. I'm delighted to be here today with Dr. Mitch Princeton, the John Van Cedars Distinguished Professor of Psychology and Neuroscience at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill to talk with him about communicating mental health to the public. So thank you, Mitch, for being with us today. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me. I was wondering if you could start by telling us a little bit about the kind of work you're doing in this arena. I have been interested in disseminating psychological science for a while. Years ago, I remember in Division 53 for a clinical child, people asked me if I could help uh, start to put together a website, which is now called EffectiveChildTherapy.org, to try and explain to the public what evidence-based treatment is. But that kind of, I guess, got me excited about other things. And the most recent piece um, that has been remarkably time-consuming but exciting has been working on a a trade book, like a Malcolm Gladwell style book, um, to really explain psych science in an entertaining, nonfiction, kind of fun, but hopefully educational way. And that has been an activity that I wish every single academic would do. We desperately need that. So that sounds really exciting. I, I, I would love to hear more about the book, and, but also kind of how did you first get started in doing this work, you know, communicating with the public? Um, not enough, you know, scientists and mental health, you know, experts do this. So just love to hear your story. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I work in topics that are always uh, of interest to the media, you know, just popularity and friendship and peer victimization, as well as suicide and, and cutting. Those are pretty evergreen um, media topics. And I'm kind of a Jewish ham, so I don't mind kind of doing those types of events or um, those experiences. And what I've learned is that once you get outside our little psychology bubble, you know, the world knows remarkably little about psych science. The more I did it and the more people were interested, the more I realized we need to do more of this. Like we need to get the work out there not just to educate each other and populate our journals, but to make sure the people who are in our studies and can benefit from our knowledge are directly hearing them. I mean, and along the way of doing this work, um, I'd love to hear, you know, from your perspective about both, you know, frustrations and failures, but also successes you've been able to savor. I mean, I will say, especially when it comes to writing a book, it was a very complicated task because you think of yourself as someone who writes for a living. We write, you know, articles and, and uh, book chapters and what have you all the time. But this was a completely and totally different kind of writing. So a challenge really was entering a world where I was writing in some ways with people asking me, uh, people advising me on whether what I was saying was entertaining enough. And mm -hmm. no one expects any scientific articles to be entertaining, obviously. So this was really weird to have people say, oh, that study is interesting in that chapter for you, but like, I don't think anyone will want to read about it. And I'm like, that's, that's such a weird way of thinking about communicating. But yes, if you want people to learn about psych science during their free time, you have to tell it with an anecdote and, you know, connect it to current events. And so for me, that was a huge challenge. I had to unlearn or relearn how to be a normal person again and not just, you know, a scientific writer. The benefit, though, I mean, it was incredible. I met with editors in Manhattan, you know, all over. And these were incredibly educated, um, obviously well-read people. And the questions they asked me about psych science were incredible, that people did not know what we all just naturally assume. Um, is common knowledge in psych science. And it made me realize how many people you can affect um, through this mode of communication and how many people can benefit from what we all study and learn um, in a way that definitely has nothing to do with the topic that I wrote about or my book, but it, all of us, every single one of us can affect every single human every single day if we just tell them what it is that we study and we care about. So I'd love to hear if, if you're able to share, you know, a little bit about your trade book. It sounds like it's focused on disseminating the science of psychology beyond really the walls of journals and the academy. Yeah, I was really expecting um, to write a book with a colleague about evidence-based practice, in fact. And when I realized how hard it was to write in this different style, I 
kind of threw in the towel and almost as an offhand comment said, yeah. gee, that's too bad because I could imagine writing maybe another book after it or a few more after. And my um, agent said, oh yeah, what would that be on? I said, well, I teach this class on popularity and I don't think people realize how much our interpersonal interactions can play really a long-term effect on our psychological and physical health even decades later. Mm -hmm. And he like freaked out. He's like, what? That, you know, really? I had no idea. What's that about? So we talked a little bit about it. And, you know, nine months later, I had a, you know, 60 page proposal um, with blood, sweat, tears all over it. I mean, it was, it was rough, um, but an incredibly cool learning experience. And that led to the, um, to the opportunities to meet with all those editors, you know, mm -hmm. And that just invigorated me all the more. And I left every one of those editor meetings and thought, this is rewarding and fun in a way that's different from anything else we get to do in our career and has impact in a way that's way different than what we do in our careers. And I remember literally saying, I wish this for every academic. I want everyone out there to take their research um, program and turn it into something that everyone could read you know, um, for fun Mm -hmm. slash to educate them, slip in a little CBT there and kind of do some primary prevention along the way. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been amazing. It's been, you know, hundreds of countries and translated to so many languages and doing press with so many different outlets. I, I've never, I never imagined that psych science could have that kind of reach before. That's amazing and just very powerful and almost just you can feel the emotion of just like how meaningful and just, you know, intense this experience was, but in all the best ways. Good and bad ways. <laughs> I recommend doing this after tenure for sure. I was glad that I did because it took time and energy for me. I'm not, I'm not the, um, it's writing is not the easiest thing for me to begin with. So I think that this was um, a challenge, but a good challenge. And yeah, as you say, the, um, the way that it all turned out was wonderful. And I'm so grateful to other people who have um, kind of done this before me. Steve Hinshaw was an amazing mentor to me in this process. Um, Joe Allen and Marty Seligman and Angela Duckworth and Amy Cuddy, Alan, um, Adam Grant, they had all done this and were really, really good about walking me through the process, which is needed because it's so different. And similarly, if I can be of help to anybody in you know, talking about how to avoid all the mistakes that I made, I'd be more than happy to, to do so. Thank you. I mean, and on that note, sort of thinking about the future of communicating mental health to the field, um, where do you see the most important next steps? Well, I have been on a one-man tour, you know, department by department, to give a talk about the importance of doing this and how we should be building this into training. You know, asking students in lab after their dissertation, great, how would you summarize your dissertation now in a two-minute quote for the media? You know, just teaching them that we have a responsibility um, to all of the people that we intend to serve and all those who are participants in our studies to make sure this information gets out there. And we can't expect students or young faculty to know how to do this automatically. We have to train them. Um, this needs to be a focus of what we do as a field. So that's been a soapbox of mine recently. And I've been doing kind of clinical lunch talks on this topic uh, a lot um, and trying to get uh, a number of colleagues have been interested in doing this at conferences as well. Because mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, a piece of what we need to be thinking of as a field. How are we making the most use of our science? Well, I might call on you to do some talks here too. I mean, that's amazing. And I think many students want to be doing this and they don't know how, especially during this time, you know, in this pandemic of like, how can I, how can I make a difference? How can I connect to the world at large? A single tweet, a single blog post can reach thousands of people. I mean, and that those, some of these are things that take far less time than writing an article. So after the article is, peer reviewed and published, and we have some findings out there, um, you know, get the word out, even if it just takes a couple of minutes. And the interesting thing is reporters are desperately looking for content in the psychology world. We're just not going to them. So if we make ourselves available, we will have many, many um, willing partners ready to help us uh, communicate psych science to the world. 
So that, that kind of brings me to the last question I was going to ask you, which is really, you know, what advice do you have to people who might be watching this interview today, maybe students or, or the public um, on this topic? I definitely think that it would be good to start practicing how to speak in a lay friendly language about our science findings. And again, whether it's a Twitter or just writing a blog post, you mm -hmm. know, there are um, many, many outlets that would be interested in publishing those kinds of things, or obviously social media is easy to do it because it does take practice. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something anyone should expect that they can do right off the bat. Um, and with practice and with some feedback and uh, don't be scared of folks in the media, they're mm -hmm. trying to do well. Um, you know, I think that practice can lead us to get more comfortable and develop relationships with folks who want to talk about our stories. Um, and, and you can really develop a whole, you know, line of your work um, in a way that's rewarding and fun and impactful and I think very important for us. Great. Well, thank you so much, Mitch, for speaking today. This was incredibly helpful and interesting. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me and for doing this terrific series. Yeah. Thanks again. Have a great day. Yeah, you too.